This video is going to be about boring these holes in the end, e each end of this part. This is a kind of a correction to the operations I did before, where I had to straighten out the holes on the hydraulic press. Some some of you may not have seen those videos because I had to mark them private because of some legal issue, but I felt like in this case I wasn't showing enough of the part to be a problem here. And, and the video is just about boring these holes, really. And right now what I'm doing is probing the holes with the Renishaw probe where they exist in the part because there might be slight variations in the um, parts the way they came off the previous operations and I want to put these holes in the location they exist because they have to line up with the holes or, or the drilled hole behind them. If, if that makes any sense. So what I'm doing is probing this and also they're not perfectly round anymore. So I'm probing them and I'm kind of averaging out them to get them in the most ideal location where they'll be concentric with each other and aligned with each other and, and um, in the best location on the part, if that makes any sense. It's kind of hard to describe, but I'm, I'm doing a calculation in the program that kind of averages out the air. So the first tool actually is this uh, end, this end mill I ground on the um, my tool and cutter grinder. And this bore has a 15 degree lead into the hole behind it, so I can't really just bore it with the boring head because it'll have a unless I had a chamfer on the on the insert, but I don't want to do it that way. So I'm and the bore is not very long, and there's also a hole that's intersecting into this bore, so that would give trouble with the boring head. So I'm milling it with the milling cutter. And, and that's that's working good, so I, I didn't have any problem with that. And then the other hole, it doesn't have any holes intersecting it, and so I can bore it. And it's also a deeper hole, so I would get push off with an end mill if I did it. Here I am backing off the boring head. Uh, I back it off two revolutions, which on this ITS head is, is um, eight thousandths or four thousandths per revolution because I left about 20,000 stock in the bore and uh, I didn't want to take that all in one cut so what I do is I usually take it the first pass backing it off 8,000 and then I measure it and then I go about roughly about halfway to the finished size take another pass and on the third pass I bring it to size is the way I've been doing these parts and that's that's been working really good so this is actually the first pass of the boring head and then I'm going to measure the bore with the dial bore gauge and you'll see here it's going to be about nine thousandths undersize so I'm going to open the boring head here up eight thousandths more that's that's what you'll see me do next and then I didn't I didn't show anything else that because this is just it would look exactly the same in the video so I, I just show the first and the second adjustment to the boring head and the last pass in the video of the boring head so here I'm gonna increase it the diameter by four thousandths or one revolution on the boring head and this the, these ITS heads I've had really good success with them and they're very consistent and they come back to the same size every time but you just can't usually bore a hole right to finish size with a boring head because it'll generally cut the, the hole it could cut the hole oversized if you did it that way and, and in this case I'd be taking out more stock than I wanted to so I decided to do it in multiple passes so that's actually the last pass of the boring head you're seeing there and then I'm going to measure the bore and check the gauge just to be sure it's measuring the same size it was set to. This is the way I usually set bore gauges. I stack up gauge blocks like that. And here the bore is measuring about two ten thousandths plus. So that's fine. The, the tolerance isn't that close. It's plus or minus two thousandths. So that's plenty adequate.
I put a block delete in the program, so I use a go-to statement to go to the beginning of the boring head, so I don't have to keep restarting the, the program, and then I put a block delete on there, so when I press the block delete key, it'll go beyond that in the program, which this was the last tool anyway, so here I am checking the other bore, and because I milled it, I'm kind of checking it at different angles for any kind of out around this issue. Although this machine generally mills circles within about three ten thousandths roundness, so it's not usually a problem. But I'm just checking it just to be sure. So this is a very simple operation, but it was the final operation of those parts, and I just wanted to show this correction to the setup of what I did initially, but unfortunately some of you may not have seen those videos, so it might not make total sense to you. So if this is the first time you've seen any one of my videos, I would appreciate it if you subscribe. And to everyone else, thanks for watching.